Hello there, welcome to the Dr. Balanjalal show. This is the first episode and in this episode we'll focus on uh, dreams, sleep and, and dreams. So that will be the uh, episode. Now you might wonder where my head is because that is pretty much the most asked question that I always sort of get which is why I always wear a hat? Like does it have any sort of mystical or spiritual significance? Why do you always wear this hat? And so I thought, well, for this episode, let me not wear a hat. So is that okay? Um, so we spend one third of our lives uh, sleeping and that's a long time. I mean, that time could be spent much better, right? When you think about it, if our agenda, uh, biologically speaking, is to pass on our genetics to the next generation, then why would you spend one third of your life just lying there uh, and, and pretty much just sleeping and being inactive in the sense of not able to sort of gather materials and food and, and things like that. I mean, you're not really productive per se. So why would you spend one third of your life doing that? Uh, well, for sure, it tells us that, there, that there's something very important about sleep, that it's hugely important and that, um, that it serves a very unique and powerful function. Okay, so... So that's, that's important. And we'll get into some of those functions. Um, now, um, so, we, so we go through stages of sleep, right? And during stage one and two, um, you have your heart rate and your body temp temperature sort of, uh, uh, sort of uh, falling, right? So there's a decrease in that. Um, and then you enter sort of into uh, slow wave sleep, deep sleep, where you have this restorative stage of sleep uh, where um, you sort of growth hormone is released, um, there's a lot of DNA repair, your memory is sort of rebuilt, um, you have during uh, this interesting slow wave sleep, this deep stage of sleep, you have things like um, well there's actually a very interesting point about this uh, in this stage of sleep um, where you sort of you have what's called the glymphatic systems where your cells will shrink and you will have this uh, fluid cerebral uh, spinal fluid basically bathe your brain um, and yeah that's that's immensely uh, that's, that's that's really interesting so your, your your brain will be cleared of toxins and uh, basically things like uh, beta amyloid so misfolded pro proteins that can in the long haul lead to things like Alzheimer's and, and dementias and, and stuff like that so deep sleep is important um, and then of course you enter in, into this stage called REM sleep which is a very very interesting stage now during REM sleep you have your lifelike crisp uh, you know, um, dreams pretty much, right? So these uh, uh, dreams with this long story plot where you see yourself projected into these novel environments, um, strange environments in fact, um, and uh, very emotional, very instinctual. Um, you lose your sense of agency, so you are unaware that you're dreaming uh, in REM typically. And yeah, so you have these bizarre, strange dreams during REM and your brain is clever, right? So your brain will go, look, um, when I'm in this stage of sleep called REM sleep, it's probably not a very good idea to act out my dreams and hurt myself. So I will paralyze this person from head to toe. So all of us, uh, you, me, uh, Joe, okay, we are all paralyzed from head to toe during uh, this stage called REM sleep and the reason for this paralysis is because it, it, it is to prevent us from acting out our dreams and hurt ourselves. So it's a very, very, very good idea. And in fact, there are people out there in the population with REM behavior disorder, which is this uh, um, neurological brain disorder where you will see people acting out their dreams and actually hurting themselves because they don't have this protective uh, mechanisms, a uh, mechanism in the in the brain stem with this system that allows you to be totally uh, um, sort of in a in a um, immobile state, right? Okay, cool. So you have that during uh, REM sleep and during uh, REM dreams to prevent you from acting out your dreams, right? So when you're wrestling with this alligator, you can't move in real life, which is quite useful. All right, what else? What else do you have? Um, 
Well, you have your neurochemical environment in the brain is sort of shifted during REM sleep. So the, the neurons, uh, so certain neurons called serotonin, uh, producing neurons, um, and so they produce this chemical called, called serotonin, which is well known for its function in things like mood, alertness, memory, attention, and executive function, meaning allowing your brain to make decision, higher order decisions and things like that. Now, the neurons uh, that produce this important chemical are sort of uh, not working during uh, REM sleep, so they will be uh, not functioning, which is a sort of, uh, you could say, uh, allows you to allow these, allow these, allowing these neurons to replenish and be uh, sort of uh, more, allowing them to be more active the next day. Now you also have things like noradrenaline, another chemical in the brain that uh, again is shut off. The neurons that produce this uh, chemical is shut off during REM sleep. And then you have another chemical called acetylcholine, which is then ramped up. Uh, the short, uh, what I'm trying to convey here is that the neurochemical environment in your brain is different during uh, REM sleep when you have these lifelike and vivid dreams. And um, there's a reason for that. Not only, as I said, it allows these uh, neurons to take a nap, you know, take a rest during the night, but it also then has a sort of direct impact on the dream content, right? So the fact that you are, uh, let's say, um, that, the no that noradrenaline is not, uh, optimally function that you this, that the neurons that produce this chemical is shut off. That means then that you know um, you know no adrenaline and, and and you know adrenaline right allows you to focus in on things right and be focused. Whereas when you have a lack of this no adrenaline during REM sleep, well that allows your brain to wander much more right and connect things that are seemingly unrelated in the world, and and so that is. Uh, and interesting because then that explains why dreams are usually very creative and you have all these ideas that are you know that are that are you know tied together and there's no real uh, absolute focus right so you have these dreams with a story plot but there's also this lack of focus there's this creative uh, element of you know um, almost like uh, almost schizophrenic in nature, right? When you have all these ideas being, you know, uh, uh, run through your system, which then allows you uh, to, you know, potentially could have a uh, benefit, right? It allows you to test things, new ideas, new environments, and stuff like that. Well, I get it, I'll get into some of that. Um, and serotonin, equally important, right? So the serotonin is important. It's key for things like memory, as we mentioned, and but also things like, you know, just uh, basic functions like logic. And so fueling br br uh, areas, areas of the brain that, that's important for making, as I said, logical decisions, putting the world together in a meaningful, meaningful, cohesive and logical way. And there's a particular structure in the, uh, uh, in the brain, in the cortex called the DLPVC, which is just this fancy name for a structure that is important for, um, basically tying concepts together, right? So you have me, Belan, you know, talking to you right now, uh, laptop, computer, room, whatever, right? So logic allows me to construct and const sort of construe a meaningful, uh, cohesive logical reality. But without the cortex and the structure called the DLPC, DLPVC, which relies then on serotonin, the, the fuel, uh, and, and since that is cut off, that fuel, you will not be able to have logic uh, sort of, uh, you know, guide you uh, through your dreams. Um, and so, so you have that, which is, which is quite interesting. Um, during dreams, um, you know, dreams tend to be populated by a lot of people um, and they tend to be, so that shows you that 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 the self is almost like it's dreams are about creating an ego or creating a self there's a lot of self construction there right and even when you think about it like when you encounter monsters or whatever right witches or uh people uh they are usually interested in you and devouring you it's not about the um environment per se, per se right so there there is this ego construction uh, during uh, during uh, dreams, so there's a lot there's a lot of this ego focus. Um, as I mentioned, dreams feel um, 
So you are projected into these strange sort of uh, environments that uh, are, are um, quite novel, in fact, but they feel familiar, which is interesting, right? So, you know, you're projected into this, like you might be on the moon having snack from the fridge and then at the same time playing soccer with Cristiano Ronaldo or something like that, right? So everything is just messed up and, and strange, but somehow, oddly, it feels quite familiar. Like you feel like you are, that environment is familiar to you. So that's interesting. Um, and dreams are in, in, intensely emotional and instinctual and this. So think about it in this way. So in tug behind the ears, uh, you know, in, in the limbic center, what you call the limbic centers, you have emotions and you have strong emotions. And these emotions uh, normally when we are, you know, awake, um, it's almost like the, the gas pedal is being inhibited by the cortex, which, uh, which uh, I've heard some people, um, some ed uh, very eloquent people call the CEO of the brain, the cortex, right? Uh, which is almost like the brake on the pedal. So if the emotions are emanating from behind your ears, all the emotion is flaring up during wakefulness, your cortex uh, is able to inhibit all your emotions and keep them in check. So there's this delicate balance between the CEO of the brain, the brake, you know, the brake system of the, of the brain and the gas pedal and emotions. So there's, there's, a, there's that, uh, you know, uh, synergistic, there's this, this, this uh, basically a balance there, right? But then during uh, REM sleep, uh, and during dreams, right, during REM dreams, what you will find is that um, you have a lot of emotions, right? But because of serotonin, which is uh, particularly uh, important for sort of inhibiting and fueling your cortex, since that uh, chemical is out of the picture and your cortex is weakened and structures like the orbitofrontal cortex, which is a fancy name for a structure up here, which is important for, uh, again, as a break, breaking system for keeping your emotions in check. Now, since that system is weakened, then you have emotions coming to the to the uh you know flaring up and you're not being able to sort of uh, control that in the same way now but interestingly i um i once thought about an experiment um that i wanted to do um, and this was on time perception during dreams um, so i asked myself one interesting question i said look if you are sleeping and you are in rem sleep and we know that if you sort of um so we know that a person, if they are they are in REM sleep, right, and 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 when they're asleep, when they're sleeping, right, and somebody's speaking, uh, they won't be able to hear you. That's what sensory blocking is, right? So they're they're, they're sort of immersed in their own uh, fantasy world, in the world of dreams. Now, uh, but you can potentially um, influence dreams uh, from externally. That's well known. So if I, for example, take someone and put them in a cold room while they're sleeping, a thought experiment, very, it's, it's difficult to do, but let's say the window, somebody opens the window, that's easy to do. And so you're lying there um, per, uh, sleeping, right, in REM dreams, and you're feeling cold. Well, then you might actually dream that you are, uh, you know, on, an, an, uh, on Greenland, you know, and things are cold there and things like that. So if you dream that, um, or if there's a smoke in the, in the apartment complex you're living, and then uh, that smoke enters your window, you're sleeping, then you might dream that you are, there's a, you're in a forest fire or something. So there is that element uh, of, uh, so to speak, of, of dreams uh, or external factors in the environment being able to influence the, the content of your dreams, which is, again, interesting. But again, as I said, if you speak, you're just speaking outside, like somebody's speaking and the person is sleeping, they won't hear you. If you talk to them, they won't hear you, except if you speak uh, obviously, if you, if you shout, they might wake up. And that's the whole point. Like the person sleeping, but if there's a, too much sensory input uh, and beyond, beyond a certain threshold, then the person will wake up, obviously. Now, this is the experiment that I wanted to do with my, my colleague uh, Ramachandran, BS Ramachandran and, and UC San Diego. We had this idea. We said, look, you know, the idea of time perception during dreams uh, is unclear. We don't know 
like whether a sleeping person when he's sleeping in fact whether time is slowed down or it's like faster during dreams like how the 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 the, the how time is perceived in dreams so let me give you an example if somebody is sleeping right um and he sort of he so we have somebody sleeping and we make sure that we can check uh, using a machine that you know that this person is now in REM sleep uh, and he's sleeping we know this so he's sleeping the person is sleeping right he's in REM and then you he's lying he's lying there sleeping uh, and then we we sprinkle water on him and then wake him up instantaneously right so we have this scenario now the question is now um, would he have a build up to that to that point in his dream so would he go uh, I was I was in the forest. I was walking, and then the clouds came out. I took out my you know umbrella, you know, and then it start slowly raining, right? So that would allow, even though I sprinkled water on him, you know, and woke him up instant in, instantaneously. Well, that would show that dreams, the time is strength uh, is 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 uh, stretched out during dreams, which would be an interesting thing if that was the case. Um, or would he just say, well, I was walking in the forest and, you know, a tsunami hit me and, and, I, and I woke up. Like, which one is it? Which is quite interesting, right? To think about, like, how, uh, and, and certain movies we, some of us have seen, uh, you know, you know uh, depict this, this element of dreams interestingly. Okay, so, um, so we have these elements of, of dreams, you're hallucinating, basically you're lying there, right, in your bed and you're hallucinating, right? You are projected into a world and you're in dreams, you're delusional during dreams, right? Uh, in the sense that you have false beliefs, you have all kinds of things you will believe in during dreams, even though you know, wouldn't normally believe them. So you're delusional during dreams and then you have dementia during dreams, right? Because then you wake up uh, and you forget your dreams. In fact, 95% of dreams are forgotten. So so you have this world that we go through each night and yet uh, we don't stop to think about how amazing and in a way how strange that this whole world is, uh, the fact that you're basically barking mad each night. Alright, so we've established dreams are strange and weird and the fabric of reality is out of control. You're, you're sort of transported into this weird space where um, the logic centers of your brain are knocked out and the self agency centers of the brain is knocked out so you're not aware that you're dreaming when you're dreaming uh and so you so you find yourself in this this world where you know anything could happen um and, and that's interesting there's also another point uh, aside from i also mentioned by the way let me just recap here that dreams are again is instinctual and, mo and emotional because the ceo of the brain uh, is uh, weakened, is he's, he's, not un, he's unable to sort of keep your dreams uh, or keep the emotional parts in check. Uh, okay, what about your sense of self, right? How is the self constructed? I mentioned that dreams and REM dreams are very much like ego, about ego construction, but how is the self in dreams? Like, is the person anchored in his own body or will he feel like he's watching himself from the outside like what is his perspective like you know is it like as i said is it like a netflix movie where he's watching himself or is it like this first person vantage point right now where i'm watching my own body and i'm looking down on, my, uh, on myself like which one is it right and it turns out and i always ask this during lectures by the way and and i get all kinds of you know answers some people will say oh it's the first person uh you know perspective others say oh it's like like a movie or whatever uh it turns out that it actually can vary so your sense of self the the, the ego the i the the me uh, Beland, right, can be projected into other bodies. So I've seen myself occupy other people's bodies. Uh, so I've, I've experienced that, or I commonly see myself from the outside. So I watch myself, like as if watching myself in a in a in a in a movie, right? Or I can see. So this 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 the the sense of. Um, um, vantage point is certainly very fluid, it's flexible, and it's not like waking life. Very, very interesting. And the reason for this, by the way, again, there's a structure called the um, temporoparietal junction, which is important for the self-other distinction and create, you know, 
creating a sense of self, tying and weaving together a sense of self. And that part of the brain, uh, and this, by the way, occur occurs uh, in the parietal lobes, in this area of the brain. This area of the brain is important for body image and self-construction. And, and so, yes, basically your sense of self can be... Uh, capitulated into another person's body. You can see yourself from all these uh, weird perspectives. And the reason for this is that part of the brain being, uh, um, being um, you know, this, uh, not working, dysfunctional. And in fact, if I was to take someone and zap this part of the brain, right, make it uh, dysfunctional on purpose using an electrical current, the person would feel like he's floating out in space. All right, so it shows you that you can manipulate the brain and, and recreate some of these scenarios in real life. Uh, so that's really interesting to think about. All right, so um, we talked about these things. Dreams are strange, bizarre, lack of agency. They feel extremely real. They have strong emotion. Time perception might be on uh, off, but more research, of course, is needed on that. Memory, memory loss. So because of serotonin, this chemical important for transferring short-term short -term memories to long-term memories because that part of the brain is not working, the serotonin system not allowing you to transfer memories from long to short, then you end up forgetting your dreams. In fact, when you wake up and the wakefulness process itself includes, it entails a surge of serotonin flooding your brain, flooding your cortex. And that's why when you wake up, you are usually able to remember your dreams for just, you know, a, a minute or what it is it, like 20 seconds or so. And that's why having a, um, like writing down, having a dream journal at that time is immensely useful because then you can remember your dreams. Uh, we mentioned uh, vantage point. Then I want to add one more thing. Your volition is also weakened. You might notice during dreams, you might try to escape a monster or a bear and you're running and this monster is chasing you and you can't get away and it's really 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 difficult to move in space and time it, well the reason for this common dream that you see all, all over the world where you're trying to escape a monster or whatever it is and you're unable to move well that's because your ability to move is controlled by again the cortex and areas of the brain that need serotonin to fuel you know, that area of the, that neighborhood of the brain. But since serotonin can provide the, the energy or the uh, fuel, you know, using various metaphors here, uh, in order to sort of uh, allow that system to work properly, right? And that means then you can't, and that's, that's so it's almost like you can think of it as if the uh, bear chasing you in your dream represents the, uh, the emotional part of your brain that's overactive and then you are being un unable to move during dream represents your uh, the CEO of the brain being weakened, right? So there's that uh, nice metaphor that, you know, it depicts the scenario in a very interesting way, right? So, so because your emotion can just, you know, get a, you know, they, they have this control, well, then that's the bear chasing you. That's the witch chasing you. And because you are weak and the parts of the brain controlling movement are weakened because of neurons, uh, certain neurons not being active, well, then you can't really move. Hope this is clear, by the way. All right, let's move on to a final topic. Well, so I just want to add here, it's interesting when you actually uh, interview actors and things like that, they will tell you that, and, and you know, one way that I can sort of make myself be really angry or sad in movies and things like that, right? Get these emotions out of me, right? Being really sort of uh, emotional when I'm not really f feeling it, so to speak. Uh, some of them will actually tell you that they will sleep deprive themselves. That's a technique that they, they use uh, to, in order to, um, uh, you know, allow their CEO of the brain to be weakened and their emotional part of the brain be overactive. So it's almost like they are uh, recreating a dream world, right? Uh, in reality, in, in life situations by uh, sort of depriving them themselves of sleep and, 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 and shifting the neurochemistry of the brain in, in this interesting uh, way. So one question that I wanted to end with is the questions, do babies dream? I think that's a nice uh, way to end this. Do babies dream, right? Um, and the answer to that is, um, well, how about we actually ask a baby?
Voilà. So how about we ask a baby, right? So here's one. Here's one. Here's my here's my nephew. Now, as you can see, we tend to wear hats in our family. Pasha, do you sleep? Do you dream? Uh, do you dream at night? Oh, Pasha, do you dream? He doesn't speak English, so I'm gonna try to do this in uh, Danish. So do Pasha. No, do so. What time? No, do so. No, do so. Ah, is he saying something? Try Kur I'm gonna try Kurdish, he also speaks Kurdish. Oh, he doesn't like this. Alright, so I'm gonna end here. Have a great day.